in order to have a business that works, you know, you have to do marketing, right? For some of you, it might be a dreaded idea. For others, it might be a joyful idea. But I want to present to you in this short video, a perspective about this thing you have to do called marketing that will hopefully bring you more joy in doing it. So the typical perspective when you start doing marketing, learning marketing is, oh, what is it for? Oh, it's to get you more likes on your content and then more followers and then more opt-ins to your email list, right? Does this sound familiar? And then get more clients, which means you get more money, which means what? What, what happens after that? Well, ultimately, the idea is that you get to do work that you love, hopefully, right? Otherwise, <laughs> so what if we get more engagement on our content? So what if we, even if we make more money? Yes, it supports our life. Yes, but ideally, the way we make money is also something that fulfills the soul. Because otherwise, you could, there's so many other things you could be doing with your time, with your in, in making money. So the way I want to recommend starting today that you do your marketing is to jump from this very myopic view that marketing is just to, for the metrics. It's to get more likes and followers and opt-ins and sales and clients, right? This myopic view and jump all the way to really the end game of what you actually want. What you most deeply want is to, what, embody your values, perhaps? To pursue your higher calling and purpose? That's what really juices me up. That's what makes me come alive every day in my business. Not, gosh, today, I hope I get more likes and even make more money or whatever. And I was like, today it may be the last day in my life. This could be one of the last days in my life. Well, by definition, it is. May I approach this day with sacred purpose and feel fulfilled in my connection with my divine source in my actions, no matter what the results might be. So let me explain how that applies to marketing. Marketing essentially has two two arms okay you have to do both things you, you do I mean, if you're if you have a service or product to provide you have to do two things content on the one hand and offerings on the other hand right content is well how do people discover you and trust you sure there's some word of mouth but for most of us content is involved you make posts on social media or you send out email newsletters or you have a podcast or you make videos, content. How can content, instead of being, let me get more followers and then I'll eventually make more money, right? Content itself is, let me give you this, this deeper perspective. Content itself is a practice of creativity, fitness, and a service from you, your heart, to humanity. That itself is a worthy purpose. That itself, when you, when you, when you show up for your content in that way, no matter what happens, no matter the results, you are practicing your soulful expression. Content on the one hand. On the other hand is offerings. If you want to make money, right, or have clients or do your soulful work, you have to make offerings. You have to say, here's my product. Would you like to buy it? Here is my service. Would you like to hire me for it? You, because otherwise people, <laughs> people don't know how to pay you money, right, and how to work with you. So offerings is, is something that you have to do regularly. So how can offerings be a deeper thing instead of just this kind of anxiety provoking Oh, let me sell this. I hope people buy it. And then maybe then I'll get to do my soul's work after they buy it. No, no, no. The offering process itself is you in conversation with your market. Literally, sometimes you talk to your email subscribers or your Instagram fans or whatever. You in conversation with them to say, I'm thinking of offering this. Is that something that would serve you? This is something you want at this time? If not, no worries. I have more things to offer, but I want to check. 
right? Market research conversations, for example, or polling. Hey, I'm thinking of offering this coaching package or this product. Which of these three names do you like the best? Or which of these three colors do you like the best for this thing? You're in conversation to see what will serve their interests the most. So your offerings, when it's really right, when it's something that just brings you joy and makes you money, is the sweet spot between what you love, what your natural interests are, and what the market loves, what they want to buy. And so that's the offering process. It's finding that sweet spot and making that offer. So I see it as, oh, it's a practice. It's a play. It's a, it's a play and a partnership with my audience because I want to use my efforts in service to what they want. Otherwise, they're not going to pay me anything and I, get, I don't get to do the work with them, right? So offering itself is also collaboration is also service, is also curiosity and how I can grow more to really serve what people want and need at this time. So anyway, that's how I see marketing. I call it authentic marketing. You can call it whatever you want. I hope as you as you show up in this way, it, it makes you more fulfilled. And then it's like, no matter what the results are in any given day, you can feel fulfilled and purposeful. And by feeling that way, you're more likely to show up on a regular basis and by showing up regularly, guess what's going to happen? You're going to do enough marketing where you can also get all the middle results, which is the engagement, the followers, the opt-ins, the clients, the upsales, whatever, whatever it is. It's like that's the middle part, but the end game is really a life of purpose and a life of service. Thanks for joining me for this journey, and I hope this is helpful. Thanks.